Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're going to be messing around with our well I haven't even connected it because we're not going to be filming out here but we're going to be uh, messing around with Proxmox and my PF Sense ish because people say that I shouldn't really do a Linux bridge and uh, give PFSense access to my network that way. Uh, apparently there is a security issue, I don't see it. There are some performance issues, I don't need it. But I do know there is another way to do it. So, uh, But for sure they haven't made it simple for us. Uh, this is VMware. In VMware I don't need the prompt or the shell or whatever they're called. I can click, 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 and it works. Now I'm gonna show you how fantastic it is in Proxmox, and uh, be advised, I'm not generally complaining about Proxmox, I'm actually, I wanna go to Proxmox because I think that VMware's license policy is going downwards, and uh, therefore I wanna give Proxmox a chance, but they are not making it easy for me, so uh, I'll show you why. So here we are at the computer and let's just switch over and see the screen because here we have my Proxmox 8.1.3 that I installed in a previous video and this is where Proxmox becomes a little bit irritating. This is the summary screen, we can see that I have messed around with it, it has only been up for 3 days and it's way longer since I installed it and uh, if we go down here and I want to, where am I? I'm in the wrong one. Data center, here. Um, if I go down here, there is resource mapping. This is where I'm supposed to be able to pass through PCI devices to other thinkies or make them available in here, right? And it says up here, no uh, IOMMU detected. This is the thing that makes it possible for the system uh, using VDT something uh, pass through devices directly to virtual machines. And it, it just tells me that it's not available. I can give it a name here. I can pick a node, pick my nose, uh, pick a node. And I can pick the device down here that I want to do something with, make available for a server, for example. And um, here is the four network cards, uh, network ports that I'm hoping that I might be able to make uh, able uh, available for for uh, directly putting onto a server, like the router. So, um, for example, num port number two here, that would be nice. I want to give that a name up here. Uh, oh, that's not it. Two could be it. And I can probably still do that because uh, it will just do it. It just won't work. But up here it just says that it's it's not there. Look at the documentation. Why don't you just make a little button like that and make me enable that? That would have been neat. That would have been a finished product but no 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 so the documentation here which is rather well oh we can put it up there uh we can see this is a pass through pci express pass through and verify uh, it doesn't really tell me how to enable it in this document it just tells me how to verify that i if I have it running and uh, yeah so instead of telling me how to enable it it tells me how to test if it's enabled or not and it does that very nicely it tells me uh, well this command which I have already tested we could do that again that's not gonna hurt anything so we can just go back and we can cancel that one and we can go to our thinky here and we can do the shell and we can put that in right there Go good gadget. That means that we were supposed to get a line that would tell us. Um, uh, we'll get a line that says this if it's good. We don't get that one. 
It's not there. I have looked. Uh, I better check. I will look really stupid if it's there. It's not there. So, um, do they tell me what to do if it's not there? Nah. They jump right over that. So, but luckily we found some other documentation where we can do that. So we need to enable that shit. Now that they haven't put in a radio button for me to do that, so um, we need to put in a command. We need to edit a file, which is awesome. Just look at this thing. This has taken them quite a bit of time to do this. Why didn't they just put it in the programming? that I could do this. And when we enable this, it's gonna be even more obvious that they could have just done that. So what we are doing, I'm gonna, I'm following a guide here because I'm not that good at Linux, but yeah, that's the guide I'm following. And we need to edit a file and it's a nano and this file. There, we are gonna add a line into this file. And depending if we have an Intel processor, or an AMD processor, uh, the file changes. So um, let's see, can I go down there? It looks like it's a normal editor. I can put that in. So that's the line for an Intel processor. Look at the Intel here. Guess what I have to change if that's an AMD processor? Just have to type AMD right there and we are as good as go. So let's see, refile, we need to exit, maybe we need to save it, do we need to save it? Right out, okay. It's always lovely to have to deal with these. Oh, I forget what that sign is. I'll get it. Okay, I got it. I, uh, I couldn't remember, I had to uh, find help, but uh, yeah. We're gonna check if we, uh, if we did what we wanted to do. Our line is still there, so apparently we need to go to an empty line and press Control O or write out and enter for do it and Control X to exit. Eh, stupid. It's not as if some programmer couldn't do that and make it available right in here somewhere. That would have been very convenient if if that button here, he could even have made one. I would be happy to pick if I have an AMD or an Intel processor. I could help him that far. Yeah, this is just ridiculous. That I have to go into the prompt and do that. Oh, oh we are in here. So, um, so far so good, I guess. Oh, we can even improve on this. Let's go in there again. There's another parameter that you can add there. So if we go in here and edit our line a little bit, make a space here and we put this in, uh, it should apparently approve performance of PCI Express ports that are not being passed through when they're working together with other cards that are being passed through I have no idea why they haven't added that uh, by standard, but apparently they haven't. So, oh, and then we need to go to an empty line and we need to do our control O, enter, control, exit. And we need to enable this. Uh, we need to update our group, group file. So um, I have that here. Apparently that's what you do. Go. Up, up, up. And then the whole thing crashes, most likely. Okay, so um, should we go and see if this added anything in here? Down there maybe? And, oh, we were already there. And it's still not working though. Oh, we're not done yet. We need to help them even more. Okay, so we need to go and edit another file. Luckily, we now know how to get in and out of this nano thing. Uh, reminds me of DUS. Uh, DUS, before version 5.0, DUS didn't have a good editor. It had something called Itlin. It was really horrible to work with. Um, about the same as this. There was also some command line stuffy stuff. Uh, yeah, we edited this file, and then they want us to put in a 
some stuff. Um, just down here where there is room for it. There, they want us to add that stuff. Of course, we need to we need to go down and we need to control O, enter, control X, and then they want me to reboot the whole thing. So uh, okay, that's uh, we can do that. No problem. Reboot. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Okay, it'll be a bit. It has booted. So let's see. Oh, we actually have that line over here. We can we can borrow that. Let's see. See if it now, if it does anything, you know, uh, we can check if this uh, IOMMU, if that is active, and we do get a line here, so apparently something happened, but uh, if it doesn't show up in here, huh, it's actually gone now, so uh, awesome, so now we can start messing around with this, and all of this I expect would be very easy to program into the system that I could just have a little button over here and just do that and tell me uh, do you have an Intel on AMD and if they couldn't read that it says Xeon and this is Kiali Intel Corporation here I, I would be happy to tell them that I had an Intel processor and they could put in those few lines in those different files and kindly ask me to reboot the system for it to uh, to take effect. That would work with me. But yeah, this is the long way. This is the scenery route. Um, so let's see if we can forward a, a port here. We'll give it a name. Okay, let's call it Nick. One gigabit. One, two, right? So let's see if we can can do that and it can forward it map on that server that's correct that's the only one we have we have intel into intel and then we have our broadcom netcards here port number zero is usually uh sorry port number one is usually the one with the lowest number and then we go a number up so should be able to pick that one the selected device is not a separate make sure this is intended it probably means that i should take all of this thing doesn't it let's see if i pick this one i take the whole thing and i pass it onto the vm i just want a single port so uh, it seems like it's gonna let me do it it's just complaining so can i can i ask for this let's <laughs> I'm gonna research that a little bit. It seems that to have separate IOMMU groups, your processor needs to have support for the feature called ACS, Access Control Services. Uh, make sure you have it enabled in, uh, in the BIOS. So maybe, maybe not this works. Um, maybe we need to go into the BIOS and fix that. But let's see what happens. If it totally crashes, I might have to go and look for that. So, uh, so far, so good. Let's try and create. Okay. Same thing. We can do USB here. I think that's less complicated. But, uh, I'm not going to mess with the PFSense right now. I'm just going to, we're going to go here to the, to the, my test machine. It's not on. It doesn't really need to be on for us to see this working. So we can add. And that would be a PCI device. And we have something mapped. So we can pick that. And yeah. So we have added the PCI device, which is a network port. I don't know, I think this is very well the, the scenery route for sure. This network card has four ports which makes it a bit more complicated and bigger chance that this isn't gonna work right. I haven't connected anything to that port, but I was able to connect it to the... Well, we could turn the thing on. Nothing should come of it. Maybe it will exit. Maybe we'll see the port. We could do that. That's not gonna hurt anyone. We can just go from that thing. We get that and we can 
open sesame. Maybe it works. Did I click it? I didn't click it. This is gonna mess up. This is gonna boot everything. Seems to be good. Um, those usually don't. Those are new. And we need to press the control while delete thing. That's over here. Buttons and those three. Go, go, gadget. Go away. Uh, yeah, it booted. That was it. So, device manager, do we have anything new in here? We have, we have a Broadcom Extreme Network card. Where did that come from? So, it works. Back in the data center and something worked. That was nice. Took a little bit of fiddling around with, but it was a quick video. And that's very nice because I'm still sick. I don't know if it's still in my voice, but well, my... I'll have to edit out some sneezing and some in there because, um, yeah, doesn't sound good on video, does it? So, um, if you wouldn't mind liking this video, we did accomplish something. Uh, and you heard me doing a lot of complaining and whining and bitching, and yeah, sometimes you like that, other times you don't like that, but uh, yeah, give it a like if you like me to stop, give it a like if you enjoyed it. I'll figure it out, don't worry about it, and <laughs> naturally, thank you very much for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again, and have a really nice day, bye bye.